Diagnostic nasal endoscopy. Just like anterior and posterior rhinoscopy, the diagnostic nasal endoscopy is an important procedure which is used to help in the diagnosis of the diseases of nose, paranasal sinuses and the nasopharynx. It is widely used in the examination these days because of the brighter illumination, magnification and the angled view of the endoscopes that makes possible to the examiner to examine all the clefts and surfaces of the nose and the nasopharynx. So as you can see it in this diagram, this is the diagnostic nasal endoscopic procedure and this one is the instrument. Let's talk about the indications now. Indications means for which the DNE is used. So the DNE or the diagnostic nasal endoscopy is used to diagnose diseases of nose and paranasal sinuses to diagnose the source of bleeding in the cases of epistaxis that is the bleeding from nose to assess response to medical or surgical treatment of nose and the paranasal sinuses and even to take a precise biopsy from the nose and the surrounding nasopharynx. Topical anesthesia is given for this procedure. This anesthesia is 4% xylocaine and even a vasoconstrictor that is the oxymethazoline is also sprayed as a nasal spray and then the nasal packs are applied. So the position while doing this procedure can be sitting or the supine position. Coming to the instruments used, most widely used instrument is the 4mm 30 degrees endoscope and if the nasal passages are narrow, 2.7mm of 30 degree endoscope or 2.7mm of 70 degrees endoscopes are used. Freeze elevator or the elevator with a suction channel is used. Suction tips are chains, biopsy forceps. In cases when a DNE is used to take out a biopsy, an anti fog solution or the savlon that prevents the fogging of the endoscopic lens. This is the 0 degree endoscope, the 30 degrees in which you can see the blunt angle which is directed to 30 degrees here, the 70 degrees endoscope. That is the freeze flap elevator. And these are the forceps which is used to take out the biopsy, which is used to take out the biopsy. Let's learn about the technique of the DNA. So after giving the local anesthesia, we give the oxymethazoline, which is a vasoconstrictor to prevent the bleeding. After this oxymethazoline, nasal packs were placed. So these nasal packs are removed before doing the DNA. The DNA consists of three passes. This is the first pass. The first pass, we can notice the surrounding structures like the nasal cavity, septal deviation of the nose or the spurs, discharge, color of the nasal mucous membrane and the endoscope passes along the floor of the nose into the nasopharynx. And when we pass the endoscope along the floor of the nose, into the nasopharynx, we can examine the opening of the eustachian tube in the nasopharynx, the walls of the nasopharynx, upper surface of the soft palate and the ovula, and the opposite opening of the eustachian tube. We can also examine the margins of the coena, the posterior ends of the turbinates. We can examine the inferior meatus. These are for the openings of the nasolacrimal duct and the Hans's valve. In these cases, if we apply the pressure over the lacrimal sac, it may express a drop of lacrimal fluid through the nasolacrimal opening. So in this diagram, this indicates the first pass. That means when the endoscope passes along to the floor of the nasal cavity, the nasopharynx and the inferior meatus are visible. Now let's learn about the second pass. In the second pass, the endoscope is passed medial to the medial turbinate. So in the lateral view of the nose, this is the inferior turbinate and in the first pass, we went along the floor of the nasal cavity. And in the second pass, we are going medially to the medial turbinate. So this is the second pass in which we can examine the spinoethmoidal recesses, superior meatus and the openings of the spinoid sinus and even the posterior ethmoidal cell. So see, in the second pass, the endoscope is passed medial to the middle turbinate. This is the important point to remember. 
and in the second pass we are going to examine the posterior part of the middle turbinate as we just passed through it the spinoethmoidal recess superior turbinate superior meatus openings of the posterior ethmoidal cells openings of the spinoid sinus in the spinoethmoidal recess and the superior turbinate so here is the second pass which goes medially to the middle turbinate you should remember the endoscope goes in which direction in these three passes now coming to the last pass that is the third pass in this the endoscope is passed from front into the middle meatus so in this we are going to examine the middle meatus so what are the structures found in the middle meatus imagine this is the middle meatus there will be many structures there the uncinate process the bulla ethmoidalis hiatus semilunaris sinus of the turbinate and the frontal recess so all these structures are found in the middle meatus so in the third pass we are going to examine the whole middle meatus and this is the third pass so remember there are three passes while doing the diagnostic nasal endoscopy the first pass second pass and the third pass in the first pass the endoscope is passed along the floor of the nasal cavity so remember along the floor in the second pass of the dne the endoscope is passed medially to the middle turbinate medially to middle turbinate so in this case we are going to observe the sphenoidal recess superior meatus opening of the sphenoidal sinus and the posterior ethmoidal cells in the final pass that is the third pass in which the endoscope is passed front into the middle meatus so by passing the endoscope from front we are going to examine the middle meatus in detail that is the osteomeatal complex which will be present here as you can see this is the endoscope and here is the illumination of the light and the complications of the dne occasionally bleeding can occur this can be due to the suction or manipulation of the instruments as the nasal mucosa is very sensitive it can cause bleeding and this bleeding can be controlled by the vasoconstrictor nasal drops so guys this is all about the procedure diagnostic nasal endoscopy if you like this video do subscribe to my channel and do check on my recent videos and playlists